travel into the enchanted world of fairy tales to review Gingerbread House, or Hexen House in German, the new tile placement game designed by Phil Walker Harding and published by Lookout Games. In Gingerbread House, you're a witch in the enchanted forest and must build up your gingerbread house to attract fairy tale characters from near and far. The witch with the most attractive gingerbread house at the end wins. Gingerbread House plays with two to four players and takes 15 minutes per player. Our thoughts on Gingerbread House come after four plays with two players, one play with three players, and one play with four players. So how do you play Gingerbread House? To start, everyone receives their own stack of 15 tiles, which will be used to build their Gingerbread House over 15 rounds. On your turn, you'll select one of three available tiles from your stack and place it on your house, or player board, and immediately receive what is indicated on the two symbols that you have covered up. One important rule for placing your tile is that you cannot put a tile on top of another tile in the same orientation. Placing your tile on your house will most often give you gingerbread tokens. There are four different types or colors of gingerbread. There are also three special action spaces that give you the chance to either swap gingerbread tiles, to receive a stairway tile, which will help you to finish building up the levels of your house, or to allow you to attract one of the fairy tale creatures, which only you can then capture. And capturing fairy tale creatures is the main objective of the game. After placing a tile on your house, you can then choose to capture fairy tale creatures by giving up the required number and type of gingerbreads stated on the fairy tale card. Doing this gives you the fairy tale card and associated points, and also awards you with a joker tile, which you place immediately on your board and you receive what you've covered up. This may give you another opportunity to capture another fairy tale creature and get another joker tile. Finishing up the levels of your house will reward you with special bonus cards that will most often present special ways in which you'll receive victory points at the end of the game. For example, you'll receive two points for all friendly fairy tale creatures captured. In the easy or introductory version of the game, you can choose to turn around these bonus cards to instead simply receive a set amount of victory points. The game ends after your 15 tiles have been placed and the winner is a player with the most victory points. Gingerbread House comes in a fantastic combination of sugary sweet artwork, high quality material, and a very well-written rule book. It was so much fun to unpack the game. Lookout even thought carefully about the insert, which is practical and even decorated with cute fairy tale scenes. And it was great to study the rules and to set up the game for the first time. We were all enamored with the game immediately when we first started playing, and we're always excited to see which new fairy tale characters would turn up. So, many thumbs up for presentation and for the rulebook. In terms of the rules and gameplay, the game is easy to understand, and only the stairway tiles might cause a bit of confusion at first, but they're then normally understood after the first use. In our groups, it never happened that someone accidentally took the gingerbread tokens, which were on the top tile, which was put down rather than correctly taking the gingerbread tokens from the sections that were covered up. This might happen because the tiles you cover up are of course completely covered and people might immediately forget what it is they covered up. But with a little concentration, this is not a problem. Overall, we think that the rules are easy to understand for all types of gamers. We were excited to start our first game and to dive into the fairy tale theme. In the next paragraphs, we'll avoid talking about how great the game looks and we'll focus more on the feeling of the game and how it plays. Our first two plays of Gingerbread House definitely didn't create the same excitement as Baron Park did, another family-style tile-laying game from Phil Walker Harding. We didn't have the need to play Gingerbread House right away again, we were also not really sure how much we actually liked it. We still can't quite pinpoint why this was the case, but we do have a couple of ideas. So in Baron Park, you're mostly puzzling and building up your bear park for yourself. And yes, other people can take away certain tiles before you, but normally there are so many different options that you can still plan ahead nicely and can mostly follow this plan. In Gingerbread House, the planning is more restricted. The 15 tiles you receive that you'll use to build your house are completely random and were made hidden during the course of the game, except for the three that are exposed. 
so you won't know how many gingerbreads of each color you have in your stock, thus making planning more difficult. Let's say most of the fairy tale cards available in the center need a lot of green gingerbreads, but you're not able to collect many green gingerbreads because of the types of tiles you could build in your house. Therefore, you likely can't fulfill these cards. But one card has a gingerbread combination that is more suitable for you, say with yellow and pink gingerbreads. Then, if a player in front of you in turn order buys that card that now is ideal for you right out from under your nose, it can get frustrating because in the end, you're not very flexible and are dependent on the tiles you have, which you can't change. So you're very highly dependent on the tiles you have and which fairy tale cards are exposed in the center. And this situation was something we had to get used to. Most likely we would have hoped for a version where everyone gets a set of 15 tiles that all have the same amount of each type of gingerbread symbol and special action symbols. Because again, you may have many special action symbols on your random set of tiles, which can be useful in the right situation, but do yield fewer gingerbread tiles. And then some other player may have almost only double gingerbread tiles, and they will also often have an advantage because they can accumulate more gingerbread tokens to use to fulfill fairy tale cards. Other than that the setup is too random and there is a luck element in terms of fairy tale cards, the gameplay does work nicely. Normally it flows fast because on your turn you don't have too much to think about. You pick one of three tiles to place down on your house board. And especially when the game is flowing quickly, it can be pretty fun. We find it very rewarding when you have a round where you can buy two or even three fairy tale cards by setting up this great chain of getting joker tiles, placing them, and then buying another fairy tale card. These were definitely our favorite turns, but they were sadly more rare. Because Gingerbread House overall definitely feels a lot less puzzly than other tile laying games, and with that the feeling of accomplishment was less strong than, for example, in Baron Park. There are just too few options of what you can do. So what you mostly do is try to build your house where you have two of the same gingerbread symbol next to each other, because then later covering up two of the same symbol will give you an additional third gingerbread token of this color as a bonus. We do have to mention that there's one bonus card, and more on these cards later, in the game which rewards a player with a lot of points if they build eight or more stories in their house. We would have loved to see more of such cards that put additional value on how your gingerbread house looks or is structured by the end, because building eight stories wasn't that easy and definitely was a fun additional challenge to tackle. The game can be played with two to four players, and we think that it works well at all player counts. We think that the first player has a slight advantage because they will have a chance to complete a floor of their gingerbread house normally more quickly than other players, especially the first floor. Finishing up a level rewards you with a bonus victory condition card that you can choose from the ones available. Once you select a bonus card, it belongs to you and can't be selected by other players. And here there are easier cards to fulfill and where you receive more points as compared to others. In a four-player game, there should be enough optimal cards to choose from, but in a two-player game, it can happen that one card is very obviously easy or ideal, resulting in an advantage for the star player. Despite this little hiccup, we think that the bonus victory conditions are fun and give the game a little more variety, so we do like them more than just the plain victory point cards, which is the alternative to the bonus victory conditions. Overall, Gingerbread House is an amazing looking game. It's definitely a family game and feels less puzzly, less rewarding, and can be more frustrating than Baron Park, for example, because your plans can be more easily destroyed by other players. The amount of randomness is definitely higher in the form of the tiles you're given randomly at the start of the game and the fairy tale creatures that are laid out. And this can be frustrating for competitive players, but does add the welcomed luck factor to make it a family game. We think that Gingerbread House is a cute game with some smart design choices. And while it's a nice family game, for us, some of our plays felt too uneven and a little arbitrary because of the tiles and the bonus cards, making Gingerbread House not our favorite choice for a lightweight tile laying game. We would recommend that people try out Gingerbread House if they're looking for a lightweight tile laying game that has a great theme, excellent components and artwork, and good but slightly luck dependent gameplay. Thank, Thank you, you for watching, watching Games Up. Up. See, See you, you next time. time.